I went on my first loan. So, so Joe came? No, 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 I went on loan okay. first. I went on loan first. I remember the day I was called into the office and they said, uh, do you want to go on loan? I was like, yeah, where? <laughs> so, Darlington. I said, where's that? <laughs> where's that? Says, it's right up north. <laughs> Brilliant, right. They said, right, but you've got to get there by tonight. I'm like, I'd literally just got my, I was 70, I'd just got my license. And um, like, right, I'd never driven a long distance journey before. So my mum, she insisted that I took her car because it was, a big, it was a bigger car. She wouldn't let me drive that far in. I had a little golf and uh, she, she didn't like me driving all the way up to the northeast in, uh, in my little golf. So she, she let me have her four by four and uh, I drove up there. I remember it was just before the training session. We had an afternoon session. I was absolutely buzzing. I had one of the best sessions ever. Like I, I was just so. It was one of those sessions where you couldn't concede. I was on cloud nine, thinking, "Wow, I'm going out playing games here." So, what was it, how long did you sign? A month? I signed a week because it week. was an emergency loan. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was back then. You could do emergency loans for a week for yeah, keepers yeah. only, yeah. Um, because their keepers were injured, and um, yeah, they had to keep proving that they weren't fit, and they could extend a week every time. Uh, up to a maximum of six at the time. But anyway, I, I, I went up talk. there. I met uh, man the manager, Dave Penny. Um, Dave Penny. Dave Penny. I met him up there uh, in a hotel. And uh, that was a Friday evening. And we were playing Saturday. We were playing uh, Peterborough at home at the, uh, the TMF Arena. Were they in the new one then? Yeah. Yeah, 3,000 people in a 25,000 yeah, yeah. seat stadium. But uh, I remember yeah, going to the stadium and... Uh, Meeting my teammates for the first time an hour and a half before kickoff, didn't have a clue who anyone was, so I was just shouting names on the back of the shirts during the game. But um, they got a free kick on the side, uh, on my left hand side, a wide free kick with about after about a minute or so, and in swinging cross. And uh, Ben Futcher, I don't know if you ever came yeah. across Ben Futcher, or is he six foot seven, he is a monster. something like that? Yeah, he was a monster. I came out for this ball and I punched it two-handed and the next thing I know, I was in the back of the net and that was kind of welcome to welcome to League Two yeah. kind of thing. But I came out, punched it, it was fine, all that, got the free kick, but that I kind of knew right. This is, yeah. That's what, to, ex that, that's what to expect now. Yeah. Yeah, they probably left a few lyrics on you as well. Cause that kind of, yeah, that league. Yeah. A couple, but. You're uh, getting but smashed. You, yeah, you're getting you smashed and... Yeah. and They've, they've seen it, young 17-year-old keeper. Yeah. Probably thought, here you go, Peter Schmeichel, let's see what you can do. Come on, put it, stick it right on top of him and I'll do him, you know. Which was, it was one of those, looking back, I think, brilliant, because I couldn't have had a better introduction because that was, that was what was going to await me for the next few years of my career. Mm. Uh, played the game, 1-2-1, one, one, got man of the match, had a great game, I remember, and extended another three games uh, every week at a time. Um, I remember the actual, the actual, my second game, I, I got injured before the game. They did this thing with the keepers where they played badminton. As I remember playing badminton, I went over on my ankle and it was terrible. And uh, I remember Keegan calling in some favours at Newcastle, trying to get me to the physio up there and try to look at my ankles. Like, did, you, did you train up there or did you train with Cat? I, I trained, I trained uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, at City and then Thursday, Friday with, with Darlington. That's what I did my early yeah. runs at. And so. then um, I remember that my ankle was huge, but again, I, idiot, thinking I'm just going to play. Forget it, doesn't matter. So strapped it up and played. And we, I kept three clean sheets and then their keeper was back fit and that was that. That was my first experience of first team football. I had four games and then I came back, back to, uh, to City and it was like, wow, I need to do this again. I have to do this again. This I can't just you can't go back to reserve team football after trying that. Yeah. You know, that the buzz of of going to away grounds, going to, you know, real men's football, you know, real senior football. So uh so yeah, came back, trained a bit more and um the opportunity of Berry came up, Berry local club, which was perfect because it meant I could train same thing, but I could live at home and um you know, I've met some great people. We had Chris Casper as manager. Emergency again? Or no, this no, this was a three-month loan to the end. So we were, we were fighting relegation from League Two. So basically going out of existence for, for a club like Berry if they were relegated. So did, they, did, they, did, they, did you replace a goalkeeper or was it an injury? I replaced a goalkeeper uh, at the time, uh, Alan Fettis. Yeah. 
Um, he's a buried legend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, he was great. Like he was great with me. Yeah. Yeah, he was an older guy, and, and you know, I came in and they put me straight in. I mean, I, Man City were great in that sense that they always insist they, they always insisted two things: one that I train with them, mm -hmm. and always that I, he's only going to play; he's not going to to sit on the bench. Either you guarantee that he's gonna he's gonna you're gonna give him a chance to start, and then it's his place to lose, yeah. or not, because otherwise there's no point in me going. Um, and then obviously debut against uh, against you, uh, and then it, it kind of snowballed from there, and we saved ourselves uh, on the last day of the season. Um, you know, against Notts County away. Yeah. We were 2-0 up with 10 minutes to go and I give away a penalty. Needing what? Yeah. A win? Needing a draw. We both need, both Notts County and us needed a draw. And, so you uh, were sending them down at this point? We were sending them down at this point. So they were desperate. They had 10,000 people there. Yeah, and, yeah, it's good. That's you know, and um, I give away a penalty. They scored the penalty and then they scored about a minute later and it was 2-2. So, and there was about seven or eight minutes left and it was basically me kicking to Kevin Pilkington, kicking back to me, kicking to Kevin Pilkington and just doing that for six or seven minutes. That was basically all we were doing and then, like, people in the, in, the, in the midfield were just shaking hands because yeah. we were both safe now. So let's not do anything rash. Everyone was just going like that, just letting it run through. Pilks was launching it and was just going through. Well, that's funny, but that's a, that is a massive game. That's a massive Humongous circumstances. And, and like, like, game, that kind of pressure. Like an, like an energy club. But looking back, now, I didn't feel it at the time, yeah. but looking back at it now, yeah, for a club like Bury to have been relegated, that was, that's people out of jobs, that's going out of existence, and having that kind of pressure at that young age, mm. it's brilliant. Has that, has that stood you in good stead? Massively, yeah, because th these were people's livelihoods, and you, you really got to understand, first and foremost, how well you had it at Man City. Mm. You know, everything was done for you, it was beautiful, pitches, tra you know, training grounds, lovely, everything was class. You go in here, you're training on Goshen Park, dogs running around, mm. bottles on the, on the floor, you know. This is, this is the real deal, like, if, if we lose this game and they, we don't get a win bonus, People are going to struggle to pay their mortgages, you know, that's, mm. you know, football is seen as this glamorous sport, but there is a level of football where every single point is vital because it, it's the difference between people having a job or not, yeah. you know, it's serious business and you got to, you got to understand that and, uh, and that was, that was invaluable experience yeah. at that age, at 18, 17, 18 years old, because I went back to Bury the season after uh, again, uh, can't buy that kind of experience. Mm. Um, so we, we survived on the last day, had a great big party, it was amazing to be part of, um, you know, all the, the sort of old guard of David Flickcroft and, and uh, Dave Chandler, the captain, all these kind of established players patting you on the back and, you know, mm. making you feel a part of this and also holding you accountable. Yeah. Like you're accountable for their, for their careers as well as everyone else's. As, a, as well as your own, you're accountable for you. the decisions you make in that goal directly impact everybody, not just on the pitch, but all the staff working there, the groundsmen, the receptionist, everybody that are working there. You're impacting their lives if you make mistakes. You're young at that point, you're going on a loan, so you've got to get to know them. But you know, t tell the people who are watching, listening, how important for you as, an, you know, as a young goalkeeper, you step into that role. Well, you've, you've got a senior keeper behind you, you know, so they're putting you in here. They're put, you know, so you're under pressure already. I didn't feel it really, because I, I was just loving playing. I just loved playing. I didn't, really, I didn't think of the repercussions of it. I was just loved playing football. It was class. And my relationship with them was, was great because they, they just they took me in, accepted me straight away. They saw my work ethic, they saw I wanted to work and I, want, I loved working and they respected that, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they had their banter and obviously I was a young young lad so obviously I was I had to do the jobs I had to do all these things you know that, that was just part of the pecking order mm. you know so and looking back you wouldn't have had it any other way of course not um, so it was, it, it was great the manager was great with me looked after me and uh, took me back on loan the season after for three months mm -hmm. and uh, we weren't allowed to extend it any further I'd have loved to stay there longer but weren't allowed so I went back to City and I had a little period of kind of, right, well, what's next now? Thinking, right, next step is trying to make it in the Premier League. And then uh, some, some geezer, some long-necked geezer turned up <laughs> out of the blue. 
<laughs> not that long today, I'll come so, No, um, yeah, then, then, then obviously we signed Joe. Um, so you had two people really same age, same kind of experience. Obviously, you're coming off the back of a, a League Two season as well. And, you know, what do you remember about meeting Casper for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> I remember, obviously, San for City was the biggest thing that could ever happen to me. And I never even considered it, obviously. I've been playing in, in League Two. Um, and like being locally linked to all these big clubs, but like it was never going to happen. Anyway, it did. Um, we kind of, we kind of like got on if you can in the five minutes we spent together when we played, yeah. and, and that meant a lot to me because I was being linked with City potentially to come and be involved in something that you were involved in, and you, you know you were open. Um, the first person who welcomed me at Manchester City, like I didn't know anyone. Who did I know? I didn't know anyone. No one. Not one person. And the first person waiting for me at the door to welcome me was you. And I've never forgotten that moment. And you took me into the building, like, I was petrified, but in a good way. In, yeah, in, in, I, in, in, in the way that you understand what I'm talking about. And not as in, like, shaking, but just, like, I, just, I had no idea. You know, I'm from Shrewsbury Town. I presume, you know, I didn't even know if anyone... I knew the manager knew who I was, but I didn't know if any other first-team player or if I was going to be training with reserves or what I was going to be doing. And you just made me feel great. And I've never forgot that moment, and that's... Probably, you know, I don't know. We've, we've, had, a, we've had a great relationship because we get on. Yeah, she's natural. I mean, I think. But that's not natural. That's not. That's no, not. no, but well, I mean, and I, and our I chemistry that we, we just got yeah. on because it was, it was very, I thought it was very natural just that we got on. We kind of clicked as people. The five minutes that we met. Yeah. I saw, oh, he's, he seems a cool guy. Yeah, he's where we're that at. Was, that's five minutes. And, it, and like, I didn't quite, I didn't quite understand, understand uh, well, not I'm saying rivalry is different now, but I didn't understand it then. I just saw it as like, I just couldn't wait. Like, and, yeah. and then the way we trained, it, it never felt like competition. It was, it was just we were going to absolutely go mental, play as much football as we can, go on loan, sit on the bench, play. That was just how it was. It's one of those. I mean, I, 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 obviously there'd, have, there'd been a change of management from when I signed, from Keegan to, to Stuart Pearce. Mm -hmm. Stuart had been like really good with me in those years, he, he took a big interest in goalkeepers. He loved goalkeepers, and he'd, he'd sometimes also come out and join in with, with Tim and, yeah. and myself and train and all that kind of thing. He loved it. Um, he'd actually kind of half promised me that, right, you're next in line uh, after JMO, and the, the next season, you know, I was going to probably be, if Weaves was back fit, yeah. it, me and him kind of for the second spot. And they signed Joe, and it was, but it wasn't, it was still kind of unreal in a way. So it wasn't. It wasn't rival like in that sense. It, it, yeah, I don't know. It how was. To it was because I was the same. I, I didn't. I had no like. I had no. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I was turning up at Man City, but I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I didn't think. Right, I'm going to come in. I'm going to you know hopefully get in the reserves. Then I'm going to push. Then I'm going to get in the first team. And then I'm going. It was just like, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> Let's just go and see what's happening. <laughs> yeah. I run. remember the. the um, was it the Sheffield United game? Yeah. It was, ba it was basically a decision from... Because you'd been on the bench a few times. Yeah. And I hadn't been. And it was... You know, it was one... Of, that was the first time moment where I was like, right, okay. All right. He, he rates him ahead of me. Okay. I, I need to seriously buckle down. I need to, I need to prove that I'm the best. You know? And, and again, it was... It wasn't his fault that... He, well, it was his mm. fault because, he, he, you know, he, he, he was good as well. But... You know, I didn't hold anything against him. It was a manager's decision. That was just how it was. Yeah. Okay, well, the gauntlet's thrown down for me now. Okay, that's the standard. I have to work. I have to work to get towards that. Yeah. And I got the opportunity to go out on loan again. Um, to, this time to Falkirk in okay. Scotland. Okay. Uh, what was your manager called? I was buzzed off your story. John Hughes. Yeah, yeah, what a guy. What a great manager. Um, I think the story actually goes that they were coming down to watch you. Right. For, for, it was a resi game, but I, I played that game instead, and they couldn't get you because Pierce was going to play or something like that. I can't remember. But anyway, right. I ended up going to, to Scotland to, to the Scottish Premier League, which what I've been 18, yeah, still 18 at the time. Uh, amazing experience. Yeah, absolutely brilliant experience going to Scotland. Yeah. Uh, same deal, you know, training half the week down in, in, in Manchester and then going up and playing there. But getting to play at Ibrox, getting to play against yeah. Rangers and these kind of teams with that was proper experience because Scotland was 
you know, it was it was everything from League Two to Premier League. You know, you had you went to you went to Inverness, you know, with four thousand people there yeah. to go to Ibrox or, or yeah. Parkhead with you know sixty odd thousand or fifty odd thousand, however many there was. And mm. I played my first professional TV game ever in Scotland against Celtic. I saved the penalty after thirteen minutes, and we won one nil. And you know that was amazing again to go and get these experiences and. It was a newly promoted club, but, but a manager who gave me a lot of confidence and, you know, wanted me to to express myself. God, you know, you kind of just let it, I understand you're going to make mistakes. I know you're young. It's part of it. Just get on with it. It doesn't matter. If you make mistakes, get on with it. It doesn't matter. And, again, amazing experience going up there. How long was that long? That was, uh, that was, you know, it ended up being 15 games, but it was the last, I think, five months of the season it was. Um, and then a few cup games played in a, I think semi final as well uh, yeah. up there of the cup, and all that. So, f- yeah, fantastic to go and play again first team football, playing against big big teams, and um, and that was kind of when I then came back. We had another change of manager, and Sven came in. God, so you've gone. So, so you've had not only three loan moves. Yeah. at that point. I had four, but two to the same club. Right, um, but you've also had three managers. Yes, uh, permanent managers yeah. at City. At, yeah. at, at Man City. At, what, what's worth noting as well is in the time that I was in Scotland, uh, Tim called me and said that he was leaving as goalie coach. Mm-hmm. He was going to Coventry, I think yeah. it was, with, uh, with Ian Dowd to be assistant manager, right. uh, which was a shame for me because I had a really good relationship with him. I learned so much from him. Um, but then Eric came in, and I obviously knew Eric from Aston Villa already. Uh, and I was, I was actually, I had one year left on my contract. Um, and we got, to, we got to pre-season with Sven. Yeah. It was a bit of a chaotic start because he was appointed late. The first day he wasn't allowed to train us because he wasn't quite appointed. Or, it was a bit of a mess. We had Isaacs and Isaacs. Oh, we had Andre- yeah, we signed Andreas Isaacs on. He, that was actually the year he, before. Yeah, he was the number was one he, Swedish yeah. goalkeeper, yeah. wasn't he? But he'd, he had a lot of injuries. Yeah. So where, where are you at this point? I'd been, in, I'd been on loan. Uh, the, the last five months, Casper talked about um, of that season previous yeah. when he went wow. to Falkirk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd been on the bench for Nicky Weaver, who'd played because they'd signed, they'd got rid of David James and they bought Andreas Isaacs on, yeah. which was like, it cost a lot of money for Yeah, yeah, yeah he was a lot of money back then. I think it was. was it, Oh, yeah. Back then. yeah that's a lot and of money. like when City didn't necessarily spend money, yeah. but he he had a lot of he had a lot of injuries. So I was on the bench when Casper was talking about for Nicky Weaver, and then he got fit, and then uh, then obviously it was Weaver and Isaacson, and I went on loan to Tranmere. I did a month loan at Tranmere yeah, as well, yeah. Um, similar sort of thing, like his Darlington, like rock up, meet the lads, play. It was like an emergency one, and I did the same thing for Blackpool. Met them on the on the M6 going to an away game to, to do the end of the season. Yeah. And then, like, no, Sinewatra, t- Taxin Sinewatra yeah, so, took over. Yeah, Taxin, Taxin took over that summer uh, from John Wardle. Uh, Money was getting just chucked everywhere. We signed 11 players in one day, I Yeah, think. it was, like, aggressive. It was madness, yeah. Signed Elano, Giovanni, yeah. uh, Shorluka. Yeah. All, Petrov. Petrov. So many good Bojinov, players. Bojinov, yeah. Bojinov, yeah. Depends, yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, we didn't really know what was going on, did we? We just kind of just assembled for pre-season, and it was it was me, you, and where's, where's we, Weaves? Weaves, Weaves had just left. Did he go yeah, back to Sheffield? No, he went no, to he went, to, up, went to Charlton. Yeah, Charlton. Went to Charlton. Charlton. Uh, and uh, so it was me and you, uh, yeah. Philip Mentel. Yeah. Young skunk. Kid, the skunk. Yeah. And uh, and then Isakson. Yeah. But Isakson was kind of half injured. Yeah. But I remember we, we were all fit for pre-season, sort of mid. Yeah. We went to Sweden, trained there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember I had a I had a bit of a head loss in Sweden, because we played a game there. He started you. Yeah. And that was kind of for me, right? Okay, he's already he's already chosen. Made his decision. Yeah. But I came I came on second half and I saved the penalty and I had a decent game. Yeah. And then we were what a week or so away from season start. Isaacson yeah. was injured. Yeah. And we did this thing with where Eric Steele, where you go right, everyone in threes, everyone in fours, whatever it was. Yeah. I remember you caught your you caught your little finger on my I, shirt. I went to grab round as in to like say we were in a group, yeah. and, and uh, this finger got stuck in Casper's jumper and just dislocated. 
And that was the day before that was, Valencia, was it? Yeah, pre-season. Right. Yeah, pre-season Valencia. Which, which would have been like whoever started that was probably going to start the season. Yeah. So I, I played and that, that game. And that obviously nailed it. Like they, they hadn't, if they hadn't made the decision, they made the decision then, didn't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but kind of. I mean, I played that game. We lost one nil, and um, I remember because David was, Silva scored. Yeah, and um, he was their keeper. Kanjizaris. He was like your hero. He was like your My hero, absolute, wasn't he? one of my absolute heroes, Santiago Cañizares. Mm. Played against him. I had a picture with him in the tunnel. I like had absolute fan, and it was great. But but you you had a you had a splint made and you had that that yeah, double I got, thing. There. I got myself. So you trained. I, I missed that. No, I missed that game. You missed that game, but then you yeah, trained. I during trained. The week. Yeah, the build up to the so game. So it was kind of like I didn't have a clue really. I had like a double finger, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. And I remember Eric Steele, we went down because we were playing West Ham away. Yeah. Went down to uh, went down to we stayed in Canary Wharf and uh, it's probably about nine at night. Eric knocked on my door and says, "Can, can I come in?" I was like. Yeah, so he goes, um, do you know what's going on tomorrow? I says, no, I don't. So right, well, you're playing. I was like, oh. I, I actually, I genuinely thought, because you trained all week, I thought they were going to play. Kind of got myself ready, played the game. Uh, we won 2 0. Bianchi. Uh, yeah, Bianchi, man. Oh, Rolando. Rolando Bianchi, Alano played really well. We won, yeah, won 2 0. And um, Did Giovanni score as well. Was it, it was either Gio or, or Martin Petrov? Right, okay. Might have been Gio, actually. Yeah, it was Gio. It was Gio. There was some buzz, though, about like Manchester City, Sven Gorn yeah. Eriksson mm-hmm. making £10 million signings, £15 million. Yeah. There, was a, there was a buzz, wasn't there? Yeah, there was a massive buzz. And we actually, the first, we, we, were, we were in the top Flying, three until about, until about just before Christmas, I yeah. remember. But so I, I had a, like I said, I had a year left on my contract. And... Uh, they were trying to sign me up to a new contract. I said, no, 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 don't want one. Of that. They tried in pre-season. I said, no, mm. not interested, not interested. Obviously, in my head, Joe was in front of me and I, I'd had this experience of going out and playing. I wanted to go and play. So for me, I didn't want to tie myself to something knowing he, he, you had three years left or something yeah. that I would, you know, I'd be fighting with him all the time. We, you know, it, it'd always be between me and him. Yeah. And... Um, so I was like, no, I don't, want, I don't want to tie down to that. I don't want to tie down to that. And in the end, I, I think I rejected about four contracts from them. And I, so I played that game. We played a couple more games. We played Manchester Derby, 1-1-0. One, one, that was massive. That was massive. I, 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 Arsenal away. We lost one. I saved the penalty against yeah. Van Persie. We lost one. Little Fabregas scored in the 83rd minute or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I played well. And, I and you were on the bench at this point. Yeah, so, 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 he, so Joe was on the bench. I remember my sixth game. So, no, sorry, my seventh, seventh game, we played Fulham away, 3-3. And the, the next day, or the, the next day we were in, Sven called me in to his office and goes, right, listen, I know the situation. I know how you felt, but you need to trust me that I will look after you. And he says to me, and this, this was something that I'd never heard before, I think you are on the line the best goalkeeper in the world. I was like, what? Like, I, Sven Joran Eriksson sitting here telling me I'm, I'm 18, 19. Thinking, yeah, I've never seen anyone as quick as you on the line. I've never seen it before. I thought, okay, bloody hell. So he goes, listen, you need to trust me. I will look after you. I want you to sign this contract. This is the best contract that that we're going to give a, it was a great contract and he goes listen think this over go home and come speak to me tomorrow I took it home I was looking at a contract oh, Jesus Christ it, wow. are you talking to dad at this point you got, you got an agent yeah I've got an agent I've got an agent but Sven Sven talked to me directly yeah there. And he was um, top man wasn't he? without yeah he was but yeah, without me knowing it he called my dad the same day and said the same thing he said listen I've offered him a contract I don't know how much you talk about it but but trust me, I'll look after him. So when I came home, I'd looked at it, I, I talked to my missus about it and all that kind of thing, and I thought it over. And then I rang him and said, right, Sven's off from his country. with her. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, you know? Of course, of course you do. Of course you bloody do. <laughs> anyway, and he says, oh, we're like, well, I'm playing in the Premier League. Sven's obviously got faith in me. A club that's going somewhere. A club that's going somewhere. They've offered me a fantastic contract. Four years. All right. Well, yeah, what's not to like? So I went in the next day, 
So Sven said, yeah, okay, let's do it. Signed the contract on the Thursday. Trained on Friday. We got Newcastle home. Trained on Friday. Did all the shape, everything. Got to the hotel in the evening. Sven calls me and um, I'm playing Joe tomorrow. <laughs> 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 For me being young, I just went, okay. Yeah, sweet. I went back to my room like, oh my God. Did he have the theory of us all getting seven games at this nah, point? Nah, that, that, that was something I think he spun after. I don't oh, know, but anyway, okay. that came later. Seven game theory. Because yeah. he dropped in after, or he, he, he put, uh, he's, he put he's Andreas after in after seven, seven games. games. So what, what you, so, so I what never started a game to see you again in the, in the Premier League. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, man, I couldn't. And I you couldn't two, the, the great thing about it is you two can it. laugh about it. Oh, like, as Casper, yeah, he's actually the same, because as Casper's like saying he just went, okay, like I've not gone and seen anyone. I'm just, no. all right, I'm on the bench for Casper, or I'm playing against Newcastle. All right, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, but and both 18, 19 at this yeah. point. 19, yeah, 19. Oh. But yeah, it was like, oh, yeah. God. Gee, anyway. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> so you got seven games as well. Yeah. And then he tried his like some for seven games. Yeah. And then I think he kind of made his decision and, and obviously chose Joe. That was the way he was going to go, which was, you know, all right, fair enough. His yeah. prerogative and all that. But I was kind of stuck now because I had Joe playing. I had Isakson on the bench and I had me again as third. Mm -hmm. So like, geez, I'm tied in four years now. And oh God, couldn't stand it. Could not stand it. Like I hated training for nothing because I'd gotten used to training for yeah. games. Okay. So it was really difficult going back to training for nothing in that sense. Um, do you I, sympathise then, or not sympathise, do you, do you get it when a third choice goalkeeper in a similar situation, whether it's maybe Leicester or any other club, do you get, do you get it when they're in that situation? I'll always say that the hardest position in any club is substitute goalkeeper and below, because. <laughs> but it, it, <laughs> no, but it is. It is. It really is. It's it's the most difficult position yeah. because the chances of you playing are so small. Yeah. You need an injury, and you're not. You don't want. You don't want. You your, don't want to come in because you of don't want injury. your colleague. One one you don't want your colleague, and most often they're, they're your friend as well. Yeah. But you want to be in there on merit. You don't want to be in there because someone's gotten injured. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But there's a reality to that, though, isn't there? That's yeah, so usually that's the case. You have to case. do something. So I, I hit the gym. Yeah. I hit the gym massively. I just started going to the gym. It's the only way to You're quite an obsessive sane. guy. You yeah. Know. So like football's obsessive you, to me. If I don't, you put your zone into something in the gym next minute. Because I was kind. It's kind of like being starved of oxygen. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a vibe. Yeah. It's kind of like starved <laughs> of oxygen when you you you've got used to this buzz, yeah. this this addiction, this drug or whatever you want to call yeah. it on a Saturday you had this game this adrenaline and all of a sudden you, you're doing the whole week's training you're going out I was going out with the, in the warm up doing the warm up oh. and then you go and sit down you go have a shower and you sit in the stand that was torture that was absolute torture for me because I had this thing that I, I, was, I was earning a lot of money but I didn't feel it was justified because I wasn't doing anything for it oh. So I, I started hitting the gym. I started really right. Okay, if I can't do that, I need to do, I need to give them no excuses. There, there can't be any excuse. They can't say, oh, it was because he wasn't professional. He wasn't this. He wasn't that. I, ca I can't give them anything that they can put a finger on and say. Ah, where, where did you get that from? Where did you that, that Where was, did you learn that from? Well, that was work rate because work rate was so, that was something that I just it, it was in me. I w I love to work, mm -hmm. but I knew that because people were already judging me before I'd stepped in the goal because of who I was, mm -hmm. I had to work harder than anybody. And I still have that mentality. I still have to prove I'm it. I'm in that day. at 31 now. Like, I've almost kind of gone, like, there he is, yeah. and now he's there. But I'm like, I'm not, I'm not there because I'm working, with, I'm working hard here. Like, yeah. So if someone's keep me out, they've got to be doing well. Yeah. And no one can put a finger on not training hard, not going in the gym. I, I get that. Exactly. But, and that's the way it's got to be done. It's, and it, 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 obviously it's not your fellow keeper's fault. Mm. You're there to support them. At the end of the day, you are there as an employee of the club. I mean, yeah. you're, you're there as an employee of the club to do well for the team. Whatever the team may be, however little you might like it. Yeah. I've stood, he, you know, it was a, it was, it's a respect thing. You know, when I was playing, he warmed me up properly. He did everything properly. It's my duty to 
show the same re level of respect back. Of course it is. So there's, there's, never, there's never any hard feelings towards anybody else when, when I've been in these situations because it is what it is. Yeah. You know, that's the name of the game. That's the nature. It's horrible, but we have to get the best out of it. Otherwise, the, the days become... But that's not easy. That's not, it's e not, it's not an it's easy not, mentality. It's that's just not, that's not ah, just that's normal. The thing, though, this is the Premier League. You can't just toss it off mm. and expect that, one, you get your chance because you won't, but two, if an injury comes, you ain't ready. That's you finished. Yeah. You've done now proven to them. You've given them a reason yeah. why you're not playing. That's so, I, 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 I was, I, like I say, I hit the gym a lot and, and that, was, that was great for me because it, it got me into a, a good... Good shape, it got me ready, and I, all I was thinking was, right, I need to leave now. I have to go and go and play. I need to leave Man City permanently now. Um, Which was your next? Well, well, then we had the situation again of a new manager. We had uh, Mark Hughes come in, yeah. and um, I spent a, yeah, I spent a good six months on the bench where you played, um, and. Again, frustration because I knew Mark didn't fancy me as a keeper. Well, that was the kind of feeling I got from him. Another goalie coach, uh, Kevin Hitchcock, who for me was really good at, for keeping my sanity. You know, he'd been a number two for a lot of his life as well. So he he, he, understood. he understood. Understood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was really good for me with just keeping me going, keeping me ticking over, doing sessions that you know would also keep me inspired and learning that was the most important thing at the time was just keep learning keep learning because i can't if you if you can't learn from playing you have to keep feeling like you're progressing keep gathering information so he would do the video sessions with me he'd do these kind of things and we'd we'd talk a lot about goal community. he'd live not too far from me so i'd see him like in the village so which was good for me and um i had you got injured hull away that's the only time I've ever come off yeah, that. I know, I know. And I, I came on for that game, and I remember our next three games were uh, Arsenal, Schalke, yeah. and uh, Man United. Yeah. And obviously, my thing, right, okay, I've got a chance here to play those three games. Obviously, it was fit again, you know, straight away. I but, did the ankle wrap no, that but, you did. But this is the thing. For me, that, that showed me, okay, I'm not going to have a chance here because... You probably weren't 100 percent fit, but they played you still. Yeah. And that was that was an indication for me, right? Okay. If 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 they won't play me there, they wouldn't play me in in preseason against that EB Stramo. Remember yeah. them? Yeah. The, that uh, was a, that the was Faroe a Islands. Yeah. Yeah. The Faroe Islands. That, that, you know, if you can't play me against a, t a part time team from the Faroe Islands in a preseason game. Yeah. That was a Europa League qualifier. It was, but. You yeah. Know I, get you, I get you. I get you. Get you. Get, we played at Oak Bank. We didn't even play our own stadium. Yeah. Um. That, that was a clear indication to me that he doesn't fancy me. Okay, so what can I do now? Well, I need to be ready for whenever, whether it's a chance here or it's a chance out. I need to be ready. So I got myself really good shape, got myself ready. They were making it pretty clear at the time yeah. that it wasn't even me. It was, they were, here they were trying desperately hard to sign uh, Shay. Yeah, but but they, was, they were trying for, yeah, they they were were trying trying for, for food from, they were trying for, yeah, they were trying um, for a lot. Who took over now? Well, then it, it was the, the shaker. Yeah, took the shaker over. just taken over, yeah. And uh, Rabin, like they were making them Rubinia, kind of signs. Yeah. Rabinia was being signed, yeah. And like young, like we had me, myself, and Casper, and but, but they were trying. No, they, they, were trying no, they wanted everyone. Brad Friedel, didn't they? Brad they Friedel. wanted Brad Friedel badly because that's when Mark Hughes had, had come one. from. Um, but yeah, it was it was a, it was a mad situation because you were playing, but your position was constantly under scrutiny yeah. in the media, and. I had a meeting with with Mark Hughes, and he he said to me that if if I get another keeper in, no, if, sorry, said, if I get another two keepers in, you can go on loan. And he bought Shea and he bought Gunnar Gunnar Nielsen. Yeah, he did, didn't he? So after that, he came in. I went in. I, I had a I had a loan move. I, I'd had a loan move. Sorry, already at Cardiff. Mm. Now we're up to about five, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd, I'd 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 had a loan move under Sven. So we've actually jumped a little bit there. Where I had a loan move under Sven uh, to Cardiff, which was amazing. Again, great experience. Came out, played championship now. Mm -hmm. um, I'd gone to Coventry as well. Again, in the Sven era. In the Sven era, yeah. This was, this was towards. So Sven had basically told us that he'd got sacked really early, and the season 
cut kind of went off the rails. Sven let me go out on loan to, to Cardiff. Um, that was the year Cardiff made it to the FA Cup final. Um, and we had a great team back, back then. Uh, <clears throat> and went out, got some great experience in, in Cardiff. Uh, Ninian Park, amazing place to play. I loved that stadium, loved playing there. Um, came back to City. And uh, again, Sven let me go out on loan to, uh, to Coventry with Chris Coleman. I had Dave Jones at, uh, at, uh, at Cardiff and, and obviously Chris Coleman at, um, at Coventry. I had Steve Grizovic as, as, uh, as my goalkeeper coach. And that, they were relegation threatened. And um, we actually survived on our, first, on our last day uh, by losing 4-1 to Charlton away where I had an absolute, absolute nightmare after about a minute, came rushing out for a ball that was never mine, and uh, they scored, and we we just got hammered, and uh, we survived because I think Leicester lost or drew with Stoke, and Leicester went down. I remember after this game, Chris Coleman took me to one side, came in the dressing room, was like, "Come on, you, come with me." So he walked me out. We had a walk around the pitch, and he's like, "Listen, don't worry. We stayed up. Forget it." You've been, we, I played 15 games when we said, you've, you've, 14 games you've played, you've been brilliant. It had, you know, you're a young keeper, mistakes happen, and it had to come at some point. It was just unfortunate for you it came today. But listen, we survived. You're going to have a great future. I was like, wow. You know, that's exactly what I needed to hear from a manager at that time. That's great management. And, um, you know, that was fantastic for me. And I have so much respect for, for, for Chris. For, for having, you know, being under that pressure of a relegation threatened manager to still have the kind of know how to go and put his arm around it, not even his own player, a lone player, you know. I mean, a, a huge amount of respect for him for that. Um, so obviously came back to City and that's when the Mark Hughes era then started. So jumping to, um, to my meeting with Mark, I had the opportunity to go back to Cardiff uh, for the rest of the season so I went in to Mark Hughes and said right I have an opportunity here to go to Cardiff and he goes uh, no you can't go what do you mean I can't go you got Shea Given, Joe Hart and Gunnar Nielsen why can't I go you can get an emergency recall or something oh, I'm sorry I can't let you go we're in European competition I need all four keepers I was like, like what can you do so that was, that was kind of just despair and I had to swallow it and sit there for, for the rest of the season and I was so adamant, right, I am done here. So was this your first experience of it not going well? No, I'd had a few of them. I'd had a few of them. I mean, when you look at it, you know, you think it's just going to come and you, oh, you're at a Premier League club, oh, the next step's this, the next step's that, next step, it's just going to yeah. progress nicely, but you know, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. But this was the first, I mean, this was the first experience of, of feeling unfairly treat, treated. Right. Like, you haven't given me a fair shot here. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I have worked as hard as I could possibly work and, you know, I don't feel I've been treated fairly here. So I, was, I went into the summer and I was, I, would, you know, I was desperate to go. And I had some, I mean, I had some great options. I had, some, I had a club in the Bundesliga and a club in La Liga, like good clubs as well to go to. And uh, they wouldn't let me go. Man City wouldn't let me go. And uh, I was growing more, you, know, you remember, I was growing more and more frustrated by the day because I wasn't allowed to train with the first team and they wouldn't let me go and I actually came on. I, I played a resi game as a striker because they needed numbers. I came on, I was on the bench for the reserves and they had injury crisis and I came on up front in a game. That was the kind of, I, I thought, oh, I'm, they're, they're, they're. You could have gone back to your days oh, when yeah, you were 12 yeah, and deciding yeah, to be a striker. Yeah, I'm, I'm not only am I on the bench for the reserves, I'm coming on as a, come on, Jesus, come on.